What kind of engine do we have in here? Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, this is a, uh, a Prince engine, which is part of uh, the PSA, which is really Peugeot. So we've got a, a French engine in the Mini Cooper, huh. uh, the internal combustion engine. Well, great. I uh, have been doing a little research on our motor. This engine apparently puts out about 177 foot-pounds of torque at 1600 RPM. And I like that number in a, a number of ways. Um, sometimes in doing these, you just run into a, a little bit of a coincidence. The motor we've selected for this is a MES DEA 200-250 at uh, the little over 300 volt pack voltage that we're gonna have, and right at 300 amps, which is well within the 400 amp uh, capability of our controller. That motor is rated, would you believe, for 177 foot-pounds. That's incredible. Um, yeah, 240 newton meters, uh, 177 foot-pounds. So we will have exactly the same amount of torque for this car as the engine that came with it. Um, of course, we'll have it from probably, we'll, we'll be able to do that level of torque from zero to about 2,500 RPM, whereas with this engine, it was at a pretty sharp 1,600 RPM. So we should have a, a motor that's very well matched to the automobile, the original design, but with a wider torque band, and hopefully occupying a lot less space than um, this Peugeot engine. Um, one of the things I want to do is we, uh, um, do this installation, Ryan, is um, I don't want to have to pull off the front of the car to change our components. Yeah, that's exactly how, how we need to engineer this, that we can work on it at the front end. Yeah, if we have to pull the motor and transmission, I'm okay, but if we're doing the air conditioning compressor or a hot water heater or DC to DC converter, the controller, I don't want to have to pull the whole cooling system apart. Let's take a look at some of the things you pulled off of this thing. This has uh, got to have been quite a bit of effort here. Can we get a shot of this? Hey, we've got a stack of uh, leftover parts over here. This is our... Uh, That's our uh, bumper, and actually has a name, and like everything else, we've labeled it. Bumper trim carrier. Uh, bumper trim carrier, yeah. There was a, then there was a styrofoam a piece on top of that and basically this after you know taking a few screws off and extracting some uh, some connectors it really is where this entire front bumper with the uh, and this is almost like, entirely plastic it is we do have some uh, immense uh, and actually quite beautiful headlights uh, do I understand these things have their own washer system? They do right here. This, this, uh, there's an actuator on this side. It, it pushes this out and it has its own uh, it, it, uh, pump in the reservoir that is also for the windshield washer system. Mm -hmm. And this, I guess, is the part I'm interested in. These are some of our air conditioning components. It has a radiator um, for the engine cooling and the um, uh, condenser for the uh, air conditioner. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is replace the motor-driven uh, compressor with a, uh, an electrical air compressor that will operate off of um, our pack voltage of 300 volts. And so we're going to use that. We have to kind of get it tubed up uh, to use the same condenser and back into our environmental system. With that and our water heater, um, the environmental system, which is mostly inside the car and not a part of the engine compartment, we're going to trick it into believing that there is a uh, uh, air conditioner compressor. Mm -hmm. yep. And you found the uh, clutch uh, connection? We did. For One, the compressor? Yeah, it was a simple two-wire connection. Just, okay, great. Just like a lot of them find. use uh, variable speed uh, compressors and so forth. That's what I was hoping you'd find is just a a 12 volt relay system there that we can use to trigger that uh, electronic or electric uh, compressor. And then we've got an electric water heater and we'll show you all more about those later. I'm just kind of perusing 
some of the, the piece parts that have come off of here. Um, our motor, our electric motor, the MESDA and controller are also liquid cooled. Yes. And uh, we're going to actually use an electric um, pump from a, that they're putting on small block Chevys um, to power that, but I want to use the radiator that was in the car. Um, that it should be a little bit of overkill, but it, it'll provide more than adequate cooling. Um, and we'll, we'll just keep the radiator and run that through there, and we'll have to run some lines to hook that up to the controller and the electric motor. So, um, what's our uh, our next uh, step here? We've got this down where we can uh, get at the engine compartment. And I see you've uh, tagged everything. Yes. A lot of these look like uh, they're not going to be too interesting. I'm not going to need them, but a few of them are going to be critical. Um, that's our starter signal, our, our run signal from our ignition key. Uh, we have to find that accelerator. Right. Um, it's uh, already... Uh, drive by wire system that should work very well with our controller and a few other signals but we've got everything labeled here um, where if we uh, made a mistake and need to go back and uh, get some of that one of the um, elements we need to research was that this is that the connection to the engine control unit right. from the car from the car itself right um, we've got this uh, block here there's several going from the ECU to the engine I'm not too interested in them but this is the interface of the car where we're gonna get things like uh, um, you know our key switch signal where we're gonna need to put in a, uh, a tachometer signal to run our tachometer and uh, who knows what else so we're right now with the online service trying to research a pin app on that help us out a little bit. So the mission here is of course to remove the engine in this get track transmission um, so we can send the transmission or our motor off to be uh, professionally mated up.